This is Mr. Barron. I'm going to show you how to figure out the empirical formula for magnesium oxide in this pre-lab. So first off, in your lab notebook, you want to write the title lab empirical formula. You want to write the research question, which is we're obviously going to try and figure out the empirical formula, specifically for a compound between two elements, magnesium and oxygen. So we're going to be forming something called magnesium oxide, and we're going to try and figure out what the empirical formula is for. So go ahead and hit pause. Please write this down in your lab notebook. Next, what I'd like you to do is write background and we're going to write down some background knowledge or background information about what an empirical formula actually is. So we pretty much take for granted that major component of table salt, table salt is pretty much sodium chloride. But why is it not, why is this wrong? Why is it not Na2Cl? Or for that matter, why is it not Na3Cl5? So you can see here that the ratio between sodium and chlorine is 1 to 1. The ratio between sodium and chloride here is 2 to 1. And the ratio between sodium and chlorine is 3 to 5 here. Both of these are wrong. This one's correct. I could also write it out as Na5Cl5. That would also be correct. See, this is what we call a chemical formula, sometimes referred to as a molecular formula. Now, there's nothing special about it. It just shows the correct ratio between the atoms that are bonding together. And in this case, since it's an ionic compound, which we're going to learn is a bond between ions, uh, it's 5 to 5. But notice this also is correct. Both of these are correct, but we have a name for that one. And it's called the empirical formula. We call it the empirical formula because it's the lowest ratio between these two that are bonding together. So 5 to 5 is correct. It's an even ratio. But 1 to 1 is the lowest ratio. And we're going to say between ions in this lab. So for this lab, we're dealing with ions that are bonding together. OK, so how the heck do you figure out what an empirical formula is? Well, what we need to know is how much of each is bonding together. I'm going to use an example to help us figure out how to do the math that's necessary to figure out the empirical formula between magnesium and oxygen. So my example is going to be between aluminum and oxygen. So say I collect data and I find that by mass I have exactly 52.92% aluminum. And by oxygen when these two bond together, say I'm bonding these two together, I have 47.08%. Alright, now say that's the percent of each and then say I have this compound between aluminum and oxygen and we don't know what the ratio is. We know it's something to something. We want to figure out exactly what that lowest ratio is. So our goal is to figure out x and to figure out y. So we know the percentage by mass so let's make an assumption. Let's say I have about, eh, say I have one gram of this compound. One gram of both aluminum and oxygen. If I have one gram of my aluminum and oxygen, mm, I don't know what the ratio is, I can assume that I have 0.5292 grams of aluminum, and I also have 0.4708. Oops, that shouldn't, there shouldn't be a decimal there. It should just be oh, 0.4708 grams of oxygen. Well, how did I figure that out? Well, this is how many grams I have of all of this, and if I know 52.92% of one gram of this, I know that that mass of aluminum has to be 0.5292. Same for the grams of oxygen. If I know 47.08% of any aluminum oxide is oxygen, I have to take 47.08% of one gram, and I know it's 0.4708 grams. Now, the first step to figure out how much of each, we don't know how much we have. We know how heavy. And remember, how heavy is not how many. So we have to convert our grams into a quantity. So the quantity we use in chemistry are moles. So I'm going to convert it to moles, cancel out the grams, and moles is always one when we're converting between grams and moles because it's our molar mass. So the molar mass for aluminum, I look up on the periodic table, and it is 26.98, and for oxygen it's 16.00. Well, I do the math, and I find that I have 0 0.01961 moles of aluminum. And then for oxygen, I have 0 0.02. 943 moles of oxygen. Now I know my ratio between aluminum and oxygen. 
But unfortunately, these numbers don't make a whole lot of sense. And it would be kind of stupid to write these numbers between x and y. Because now we're dealing with how many, and we're now in moles. We need to simplify these numbers somehow to figure out the ratio that we're bonding. So what you do is you take both of these numbers. I know that's my moles of aluminum. Then I also have my moles of oxygen. And I compare both of them. And I go, OK, which one's smaller? Well, the aluminum looks to be a little bit smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide each of these numbers by the smaller of the two, and that simplifies the ratio. So I'm going to divide this by 0 0.01961 moles. Divide this by 0 0.01961 moles. This changes into 1. And when I do the math for this, I get somewhere around 1.5 moles of oxygen. OK, so now my ratio is dramatically simplified. I started with a ratio of this to this. Now it's down to this to this. Still not totally simple, because you usually don't see decimals in here for a chemical formula, or an empirical formula for that matter. So what you now need to do is, uh, well, what I can do is I can actually multiply both of these by the same number, which is 2. Now if I multiply this by 2, it becomes 3. Multiply this by 2, it becomes 2. And I can see here that I have a 2 to 3 ratio. That ratio right there is my empirical formula. So all of this is the math that's necessary to figure out the empirical formula from a comp for a compound based on data that you're given from a lab, which is what percent of your co final compound is this by mass, what percent of your compound is this by mass. All right, that's the setup. So the point of our lab today, keep writing this in your background, please, is to get a ratio between magnesium and oxygen. So this is for our actual lab. Now magnesium solid, and the oxygen we're just going to get from the air. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the magnesium into a crucible like this. Then what we're going to do is we're going to heat that crucible with a Bunsen burner, and oxygen is going to come into the crucible from the, atmosphere, uh, from the atmosphere, our air, and you're going to end up with a bond between magnesium and oxygen. So you're going to end up at the end of this lab with an unknown ratio between magnesium and oxygen. So the data we're collecting is essentially just the mass of the magnesium before and the mass of the magnesium and oxygen before. And once I know my mass of magnesium before, then that's, that's one point. That'll tell me my MgX. And then I have to compare that with OY. And that's where you're going to take these numbers. And then when you know how many grams of each of these, you convert them to moles. And I'll show you where we'll start off. You'll convert them eventually to moles right here. You You'll figure out the grams of each, only in our case this is going to be magnesium. Convert it to moles, and now you know how many, not how heavy. Then you divide by the smallest, and you figure out the ratio. So for us, what we're going to do is to figure out both of these points, we'll have the mass before, we'll have the mass afterwards. So what you need to do is take the mass afterwards, subtract the mass before, and then you know the mass of your oxygen. See, we need this data point, and we need this data point. These are the two data points that we need to figure out the empirical formula for this lab. Now, before you begin this lab, that's the background. We're done with that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to write out the materials, the safety, and the pre-lab. So the pre-lab begins before we write materials and safety. So for the pre-lab, here's what I want you to do in the pre-lab. I want you to answer the following questions. I'm going to display this on the projector here. And here's the materials and safety in the pre-lab. And this right here, which you're going to need to write down, and you're going to need to answer these questions before you begin the lab, is going to be posted right next to this video podcast. Also, you're going to see another video podcast, which is going to show you how to actually use the equipment. If you have any other questions, please let me know.